chapter 20. And today, obviously, as you know, is Mother's Day 2023. And we read the law of God that was given to Moses on, on, the, on the Mount Sinai. And one of the laws, in fact, it's law number five, says, honor thy father and thy mother. We should, rightly so, honor the mothers today. Praise the Lord that we live in a country that has set aside a special day for mothers, that we can certainly uh, glorify God in the fact that we all have a mom. If it weren't for mothers, none of us would be here, right? I heard Pastor preach that this morning uh, online. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Uh, Speaking of, if you would, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. Uh, I know he went to this portion of Scripture today. I I heard him preach it. I I heard what he had said. But I have a little something different about this. Not much, but a little bit. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. And mind you, that's not the only verse I'm going to. Uh, I, you know how much I love going through different scriptures, and, and so I'm going to take you front to back, left to right, up to down, and all around. Uh, amen. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible says, And Adam called his wife's name, what is that next word? Eve. Because she was the mother of, what's the next two? All living. Eve is the mother of all living. Of course, we know, again, she is the mother of every one of us. She's the one that started, uh, the, shall I say, the human race. Uh, between her and Adam, which the, the Bible says that they were to uh, be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth, and they did. Eight billion people, imagine, coming from two people. Obviously, Eve had a, an instrumental part of all that. And so we see that she, uh, I, I want you to see this, she is a mother that brings life. Every one of us that has life had a mother at some point in time in our lives. Uh, let us not forget that, you know, that can't be two women and it can't be two men that bring forth children. It has to be a man and a woman. It has to be a mother and a father. Not a mother and a mother, not a father and a father, not every, anything else other than a mother and a father. Even the animal kingdom knows this. And shall I say, even the angelic kingdom knows this as well. We know that there's something special about the woman that God brought forward from Adam's rib. Uh, And I'm not going into all that. I know Pastor uh, hammered that home today. Uh, But just remember that Eve is the one that brought life to this world. And through her, we can say, she is my great, 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 how many greats? Grandmother. Amen. But there was something special about her. As I know Pastor has brought this out before too, that not only was she Adam's wife, but she was twice refined. How special are you ladies? How special are you to be twice refined? I mean, man was made out of dust, out of dirt. I mean, you know, snakes and snails and puppy dog tails, that's what boys are made of. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, sugar, and, sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what little girls are made of. Amen, amen. But you didn't come directly out of the dust. God brought you out of something special, out of, out of, a, out of Adam's rib. And uh, praise the Lord for that, that you are twice refined. There's something beautiful about a lady's countenance, as should be. Uh, Genesis 17, if you would, let's continue on. Genesis chapter 17. Now, mind you, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a short message today. Short sermon. And uh, what's that? Amen. Uh, that just, just to let you know out there, that was my wife that said amen. So... Uh, but I'm sure there were many here that are in their minds saying that very same thing. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 16. <laughs> Amen. What's that? No, I missed it, brother. What did you put up there? Was it the Amen with the squirrel? Yes! Hallelujah! Uh-huh. <laughs> That's great. Uh, if you can't have fun in church, where are you going to have fun? 
Yeah, and this is clean fun versus the world's fun. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Genesis seventeen sixteen says, And I will bless her, and will give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Can you imagine God telling you specifically you're going to be a mother of nations? He said that twice, if you remember, Isaac and Ishmael. Uh, we know that Ishmael, the Ishmaelites, also known as the Muslims, are a great nation. They are a very uh, large nation within this world. But also you look at the Jewish nation that came out of Isaac and then out of Jacob. But not only did the Jewish nation come out, but we as Christians were born out of that as well. So you figure how many Christians, how many Jews, and how many Muslims between two women and one man. It's amazing to think that, that uh, the majority of this earth was populated because of the promise given to two ladies. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I want you to see this. Uh, she is a mom blessed of God. She is a mom blessed of God. Can you imagine having the blessing given to you by God Himself saying you will be a mother of nations? Uh, I mean, imagine the how shall I say this? The uh, how would you feel? How how much burden is placed upon your shoulders when you hear that a nation is going to be born from you? I mean that that's pretty impressive that God singles out one person and says you are going to be a mother of nations. You talk about a blessing of God. Talk about a heritage that continues. I mean, uh, we know in, in Psalm, I believe it's 138, I could be wrong with that, please forgive me, but it talks about uh, having your quiver full, that, you're, that you are a blessing uh, of God as a child. But let's continue on, if you would, Genesis chapter 24, Genesis 24 and verse 60. Genesis 24 and verse 60. I know my wife was looking up the psalm. Was I right on that? All right. It's in the 130s somewhere. I want to say 135, 6, 8, somewhere in there. Anyway, let's continue on. <laughs> Genesis 24 and verse 60. The Bible says, And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. That's a lot of people, wouldn't you say? Thousands of millions. I mean, the, in those days, they didn't have the, the word billions or trillions. But thousands of millions. I want you to think about those that came from Rebecca. And how many people have, uh, remember, we're living in a, in a world today that has over 8, million, 8 billion people. Right? Eight billion, yes. Eight billion people. And, and I mean, if you take the eight billion today, or however many that is from Rebecca, so you figure the Jewish nation uh, and, and Christianity, and take that and start from today and work your way all the way back to Rebecca, how many would that be? It amazes me that this is, a, this is a mom that is blessed of her family. This is, a, this is a blessing placed upon her. Not of God Himself, but her brothers have said this. Could you imagine that kind of blessing placed on you? I mean, you would say, oh, that's a curse. Good gravy. You know, how am I going to have all this? Well, God knows. And there's a reason why God blessed her because of what she had done. So remember that not only might you be blessed of God, but you also might be blessed of your family as well. It amazes me. Now, now I'm going to stop right there and say this. Praise the Lord for moms, but can I even go further than that? And praise the Lord for those that have a motherly influence on anybody. Whether you've had children or not. 
Many of you have had influences on multiple people, whether it's children, whether it's adults, it doesn't matter. But if you have a motherly influence on somebody, God bless you. My wife and I were talking about, I believe it was the, the, uh, the ladies' conference that you were just at yesterday, and, talk, and, and she and I were talking, and I said, it sounds just like Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, we're not going to go there, but just remember that how important it is to have that motherly influence on the next generation. And not even the next generation, how about the previous generation? Why do I say that? Because there are baby Christians that may be older than you, but you are older than them in the Lord, spiritually. And so you can have an influence on them, believe it or not, as a motherly influence. Yes, we are too. Uh, to be respectful to those and remember our place before them. But even so, being spiritually older, it is important that you continue to train them in the way they should go. Let's go, since we're, I know we've been in, in the Old Testament for the last couple, uh, couple verses, let's go to Luke, if you would, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And let's look at verse 45. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. <clears throat> now just after this, we know what we call Mary's Magnificent, uh, the, the Mary's Hymn of Praise. But prior to that, we see what Elizabeth has told Mary. Uh, you know that Mary and, and Elizabeth are, are pregnant, both pregnant at this time. Elizabeth is ready to have John the Baptist and and soon, or about six months later, Jesus comes along. And so we see this, this verse that, that Elizabeth is, is talking to uh, Mary, and she says this, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I said this, I said, a mom that believes. A mom that believes. She believed the Lord. You know, his, 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 his promises are not slack. They are not, as we count promises. But he is faithful in that he will perform that which he has promised until the Lord come. But let's remember that this is a mom that believes. Could you imagine uh, being seen by angel or seeing an angel and the angel you know, telling you what was going to happen, telling you the name of the child, telling you how all this was going to take part, what was going to happen between her and Joseph? I mean, it just gave her the whole description of what was going to happen. And that this child is something very special. I, I imagine that the, the angel told her, you are fulfilling what Isaiah had prophesied about your son. You are fulfilling what, what God had already written down how many years ago before this came forward. You know, how many years? I think it was around 700 years prior to Jesus' birth that he told Isaiah, Isaiah what was going to happen. And Isaiah wrote it down. God promised and he still performed it, even though it had been years ago, or years later, excuse me. Even though it was years later, it was still performed in the way God said it would be performed. Now, let's look at Scripture today and see the promises that he gave us 2,000 years ago that are going to be and are being performed as we sit here today. Don't ever think that, that God is slack concerning his promises, because he will, he will he will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can, take, you, you can count on that. You can count. And listen, if this book is all truth and nothing but the truth, you have to, you have to take that to, to count on that. You have to. I almost said take it to the, to the bank, but I wouldn't take anything to the bank. But that's not here nor there. <laughs> but it's true. You know, no matter what the bank says, I know his true his word is true. They can lie to me, but he cannot. 
remember that there's something special about a mom that believes. Because it says, for there shall be a performance of those things. I mean, we know what a, we usually know what a performance is. Anybody ever been to a, a, like a show or a Broadway show or a play or something like that? Well, that's not the kind of performance he's talking about. He's talking about seeing it through. Watching it all the way from the time he said it all the way till it was taken care of at that point. He's performing it. It's like a surgeon perform, performing surgery. It's not a play. <laughs> it's not a good time. Okay? But he's seeing it through. He doesn't stop in the middle of it and say, mm, nah, I'm not, I'm not into it right now. <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way. I hope not. Good gravy. Could you, anyway, I digress. But even more importantly, a mom that believes is one that's going to perform as well. One that believes in the Word of God is going to perform her duties as a wife, as a mother, as somebody that cares. How important is it that we know what God has for us? What, what His expectations are for us? That we too ought to perform what He has promised. Let's continue on, if you would. Acts chapter 1, please. Acts chapter 1. I told you it's going to be short. Now, I wasn't, I, I'm not lying. Now, I know short to me isn't short to you necessarily, but, you know, it's all about perception, right? Perception is everything. Who here has heard that one? I know you've heard that one. Perception is everything. Uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. <clears throat> and then we're going to be going to Acts 12, 12. But let's start here. It says, These all continued with one accord in prayer, and supplications with uh, supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren now I'll turn with me to Acts 12:12 12, 12. because Acts 12:12 12, 12 says this when he had considered the thing he came to the house of Mary the mother of John whose surname was Mark where many were gathering Gathered together, praying. There's something about a praying mother. Not a praying mantis, a praying mother. A mom that prays. You know, a mom that prays usually desires only the best for her child. A mom that prays only desires what God has ready for them. A desire that God would use them in a mighty way. Uh, a, a mother that that prays is is one that, that desires that uh, the next generation mo- or uh, son or daughter uh, will raise up children and, and be able to continue on that generation. Uh, a mom that prays desires that God would use them in a in, in a way in the ministry and and in their lives that He would get the honor and glory, not her and not them. There's something about a mom that prays. I hope you've prayed for your children, and if you don't have children, I hope you pray for those that you have uh, a motherly um, influence. Thank you. Because it's, it's precious. It's something important. It, it just merely shows the love of Christ in you. We ought to pray for one another. The Bible says that we ought to pray for one another. It also says that we ought to cease not to pray. It also says that we ought to to uh, to do things or, or decently and in order. Uh, the Bible desires that we have a communication with our Father, with God, and we ought to. By rights, we ought to. We ought to exercise that every day. But how often life gets in the way. How often life gets too busy and how often we say, I don't have time to do that right now. I don't have time to pray right now. Well, can I tell you, when, th- when things get difficult, you're going to have time. You're going to make the time. So why not make the time when things are good, let alone when they're bad? Make sure that you are uh, raising up the name of, of Christ 
and saying, Lord, you know I love my children. I desire only the best for them. Lord, you know that this, this, this child that, that I have an influence on, Lord, I, I only want the best for them. I want your will for them, Lord, and I pray that you would show them your way. How important it is to have a mom that prays. And lastly, if you would, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter one in verse five. The Bible says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. I want you to see it's a mom of faith. A mom of faith. Interestingly enough, Paul even calls out this faith. He says it's unfeigned. There's no fakeness to it. It is, it is a, a, a perfect faith. It is a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a faith that you can count on. It's not fake. It's not pretended. It's not just brought forward through emotions. It is a real faith. Not only by his mom, but his grandmother as well. Three generations you're looking at there. Wouldn't you love to see three generations come from your family that are serving the Lord, that are desiring uh, what God would have in their lives? It's un, an unfeigned faith. It is a, a perfect faith. It is not fake. It is, it is genuine. Which dwelt first in thy grandmother and then thy mother and persuaded in thee also. He, he, like I said, he lists right down who it was and how it came down through. Notice, interestingly enough, he doesn't talk about the men there other than Timothy himself. It was the ladies. It was the grandmother and the mother that had this unfaked faith, unfeigned faith. Question is, where was dad? Why doesn't dad have that too? There's something precious about a mom that has faith. Now, I want to back up a little bit when we're talking about Luke 1. Actually, let's say Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. And the reason I'm doing that is because I, I want you to think about something. I want you to, to consider something, ponder something in your mind. Acts 1.14 says this, and you know, I'm not going to ask you to turn there. I'm just going to ask you to think about this. These all continued in, with one accord in prayer and supplication with women and Mary and the mother, mother of Jesus and with his brother. Do you realize what Mary just went through, what she had to watch her son go through? Could you do that? Could you stand by and watch your child get taken away? You know he did nothing wrong. There was no uh, accusation on him other than the fact that he claimed to be the Son of God. That was his only accusation, and they, they claimed blasphemy on him and desired that he would die because of it. Now we know there's more to it than that. I'm just simplifying right now. And the reason why I'm simplifying is because I want you to think about Mary and what she had to watch. I'm not trying to rise her up to a pedestal. Please don't get me wrong. But I want you to put yourself in her place. To sit there and watch your child get taken away by this mass uh, of, of people that took him and, and started, even before he got to where he, they were going to try him, I'm sure they were beating him. I'm sure they were hitting him. I'm sure they were mocking him. He gets to trial, and I imagine she's there, or at least she's hearing of it. Hearing her son not say a word, but yet allowing all this to happen. The Bible says, as a sheep led to the slaughter, or to the shearers, excuse me, the sheep led to the shearers. Dumb. He didn't say a word. And I'm sure she's sitting there saying, what in the world is going on? This is my son. How, I can't do anything about it. i got to watch all this happen. 
Where's the man that's going to stand up for him? Yet they all fled away. Could you imagine being his mom at that time? And then they, they take him in and they, they scourge him and, and she recognized him when he went in, but she certainly didn't recognize him when he came out. Bloodied up and beaten and his crown of thorns and, and this robe that they decided to put on him. Where's my son? What happened to him? God, why are you allowing this to happen to my son? Then taking, taking him up to the Mount Gol Golgotha, or Golgotha, or however you want to say it. And he's just laying there, and he, he, he's the one that laid his life on that cross. He's the one that laid down upon there and allowed them to put those nails in, in his hands and in his feet. And watching this all take place and, and hearing every word that came out of his mouth. And then hearing him tell John that that was his mother now and she, he was to take care of her. I imagine that broke her heart. Did she realize who he was? Did she truly believe that? Many didn't believe until he resurrected Think of Thomas. I mean, even the Bible says that his brothers didn't believe him, not till he was raised up from the dead. So my question is, did she? She, she kept these things in her heart, but did she truly believe them? Just because you keep something in your heart doesn't mean that, that you believe it. She saw her son up on that cross, and she heard the sayings that, she, that he had said. And then he died. One man stood with her. His name was John. It's the only, it's the only disciple that stood there with, with the, and she had other ladies with her. Those obviously had an influence in his life. Why else would they be there? Sure, they were there to comfort her, but they must have had some sort of influence. But yeah, one man, and that was it. His name was John. Couldn't imagine what, what it'd be like to be married at that time. Again, I'm not trying to hold her on a pedestal, but I just want you to put, through, put in your mind what she had to go through. Could you go through the same thing and still thank God for all that happened? Because she was found praying thereafter. After he came out of the grave, after the, the 40 days were passed, after he returned into heaven... She was there while they were praying. What kind of faith did she have? What kind of prayer life did she have after seeing all that? How precious is it to be a mom or a motherly influence? To me, it is very precious. As many of you know, I was adopted. And you want to talk about a motherly influence. I was adopted, and, and my adopted mom, I mean, I wouldn't have known had they not told me I was adopted. They loved me with a love that just, you just can't imagine. I praise the Lord for that. She passed away 18 years ago. I loved my mom. But then, 27 years ago, it was the first time I got to meet my biological mom. And now I have the chance to have a, a relationship with her now, too. I praise the Lord for that. You know, that was a day and an age where things could have went very different for me. I, I may not even be standing here had that been true. But praise the Lord. God put in her heart that she would allow me to go with a couple that could not have children but yet would love me unconditionally. 
God is good. And I thank him for the influences of the ladies in my life. And I certainly praise the Lord for every one of you here tonight. What an honor and a privilege it is to know that you're here on Mother's Day hearing the preaching of the Word of God. And I hope you're getting a blessing out of it too. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Lord, the, the, the precious Word of God. Thank you for the influences you have given in our lives, and especially the motherly influences. God, how often they've kept us out of trouble. And we thank you for it. Lord, they, they've, uh, they've certainly been a, a help to us. And God, I just ask that you would Lord, bless them in a way that only you can. Not only this day, but every day of their lives. Again, Lord, thank you so much for your loving kindness to us. Thank you for your long-suffering. How many moms have been long-suffering with their children? But God, we know that you're much more long-suffering than they. And God, thank you so much for that. I do pray, Lord, as we leave this place, that you yourself would be honored and glorified. And Lord, as we look forward to coming back and, and worshiping you yet again, may it be ever in our minds how good a God you are. May you get the glory and honor that certainly do your name tonight. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.